I want to start off um, by wishing those of you who are going to be celebrating the new year on the 1st of January, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, for, for those of us who are following the Christian calendar, the new year started on the first Sunday of Advent, which I think was this year was the 2nd of December. Um, and as such, for those of you that are catching up, Happy New Year again. Um, as one year comes to a close and another year um, begins, I just want to take a moment to reflect on how Soko Films has done in the last year. Um, and not just Soko Films, but the whole of the Christian community here at the park. Because I think it's fair to say that 2018 has seen a turnaround. Before, before we had Christians like Jay Smith ordinarily fighting in the Alamo against all the odds on his own. But then in this year, we've seen Christians who have intellectual presence, emotional presence, and physical presence come down to the corner and really um, tear up the place in terms of challenging the Dawa team according to their own double standards and, and standing up in face of intimidation by militant Salafists um, and those who, when they're losing the argument, resort to tra trying to physically intimidate, even physical violence. Um, the, the, the reality is that the, the church has managed to do a fantastic job. Brother, we, we're going to be a few minutes. Um, the church has done a fantastic job um, here at the corner. However, I want to lay before the church leaders the same challenge that I laid before them a year ago. Yes, there are now more Christians who are able to do evangelism because they're emotionally, physically and spiritually uh, and intellectually present and, and have got presence. But the church leadership, again, is oblivious to the fact that this is an evangelistic centre to the world. It is an evangelistic centre to the world that the church has ignored, the church leadership. There should be a concerted effort, a demonstration of resources and energy in terms of manpower and money um, here at the corner doing evangelism, evangelistic teams. And I want to challenge the wishy-washy nature that the, the, the church is under do, doing evangelism in our society in a way that ignores what's happening here at Speaker's Corner. As I say, it is a window to the world, and if the leadership doesn't have that knowledge, that, that tactical and strategical thinking, then I question your ability to work properly as leaders to the Christian community. Um, now, Soko Films, in the last year, <coughs> just to get you some of the stacks, has, has now reached a point of 19,800 um, and something. Let's see if I've got the exact figure. Subscribers. Subscribers. 19,800. Do you know the last number? I, I don't know the answer. So okay, 14, 14, one four. So 19,814 subscribers. We were aiming to get to 20,000 subscribers by New Year's Day. Now, in terms of our viewers, um, obviously our main audience comes from the English-speaking world. So, we've had 83,216 from inside the UK, topped up by 56,436 in the United States. In Canada, we've had 13,908. In Australia, 14,498. So obviously the English-speaking world naturally is our, our main audience. But one of the most uh, populous uh, nations in terms of the number of Muslims is India. And from India we've had 10,842. And another populous Muslim nation is Indonesia and we've had 9,211 views. So don't underestimate how many people are being reached by this channel. Now, in terms of, in terms of uh, stats, the, the average viewing time 
has been around uh, 10 minutes. So that's pretty good, to be fair. Um, and then obviously people come back and they view it again. So we're reaching tens of thousands of people and we're doing that in countries like Malaysia, uh, Germany, United Arab Emirates where we had 2,916, Ireland, uh, Ghana, Denmark, Norway, Singapore, France, Kenya, Netherlands. Um, I do want to issue a correction though. Throughout this year I have boasted that we have had 13,000 views from inside Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm afraid that I was giving out duff information. Um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, um, we uh, have actually only had 2,406 views from inside Saudi Arabia. What was originally quoted was the number of minutes that had been watched from inside Saudi Arabia, which was 13,000, which is now standing at 19,000. Now, the reason why I correct myself is because it's important to be honest. Uh, when you make a mistake, if that mistake becomes obvious to you, you should correct yourself. So in the new year, what we hope to be doing is uh, to, to continue our initial effort from last year about expanding the range of kind of programs that we do. So we're going to have more testimonies. We're going to have more interviews connected to uh, politics with figures. Um, we're going to be doing live streams. Uh, we're going to continue doing our staple, which is debates at the corner. And depending if they're ever arranged, we might go on to do um, uh, public debates. Um, we'll also be doing um, sort of teaching sessions um, hopefully filmed in a studio. So we want to put out an appeal if you're a Christian or you know of a Christian organization or building where we can have a studio to work from uh, within somewhere within the circle line of the, the London tube map, anywhere within that central zone, um, we would be interested to hear from you because we need a studio to do some of this stuff. Um, we are basically all doing this in our free time. We're doing this as volunteers and basically, to put it frankly, we're not in an environment where we can film um, from our homes. I'm certainly not. However, we are doing some workarounds on that. And I want to leave you with this thought, this meditation for the new year, because as Advent has ended, and as we've entered into the Nativity Feast, we reflect now about how we want to go into the remaining 11 months of the year. And in the gospel, Christ commands his disciples to take up your cross and to follow me. And the apostles left everything and followed him. And the, the question that I want to propose to you is, the cross was a symbol of death and sacrifice. It's like someone coming up to you today, take up your executioner's electric chair and follow me. Or someone say, take up your firing squad and follow me. Or someone saying, take up your um, um, injection chair, whatever they use in America when they inject people with poison, and follow me. That's the image that Christ was giving. And when he gave it, the people's minds would have gone instantly to the decaying corpses on the crosses leading into Jerusalem and other cities where criminals had been crucified. And so I want to ask you two things. One, what within you needs to die so that you can be a better disciple of Christ? What, what, what within you is it? What emotional sentiment or desire or passion do you need to stop feeding to become uh, a better disciple of Christ? What is it that you need to stop giving time to and stop giving energy to so that it dies? And yes, that will cause you suffering because it will basically be redefining yourself. What is it that you need to die to to be a better disciple of Christ? And finally, what is it that you need to give up to follow him? Like, how much are you willing to give up to follow him? How many of you need to swallow your pride to follow Christ, to swallow your ego to follow Christ? 
to stop feeding your lusts, your greeds, your envy, your anger, your wrath? What do you need to die to? What do you need to give up? Where are you placing your time and your money in terms of your own journey? And how much are you willing to give to the cause of the kingdom? Because I've said it before and I'll continue to say it because it needs to be heard. The kingdom of God will not advance unless we clear a way for it, a way by force. That means that whatever stops us from entering the kingdom of God, we must sweep it aside for our own individual lives and also in terms of society. And that demands sacrifice. No kingdom can advance without war. No kingdom can advance without effort, without a personal sacrifice. Too many Christians follow Christianity light. They follow Christianity with all the good bits and none of the sacrifices. And that kind of church counts for nothing because when hard times come, those kind of Christians are quick to give up the practice of the faith. So I invite you to ask yourself, what can you sacrifice for the cause of the kingdom? What can you give to the cause of the kingdom? What within you must you die to? What must you leave behind to advance your own spiritual journey and to advance the church and the kingdom as a whole? This, this particular message is directed specifically to those people who contact us saying, how can I help, how can I support? One, um, you can donate. There is a donation tab, which one will soon be appearing for me, Bob the Builder, in the videos. And there's also a donation tab for JC, the guy behind the camera. Uh, please do donate if you feel that you want to, um, if you feel that you can, and only give that which you can afford. Secondly, um, we're looking for translators, people who can translate our work into other languages, particularly Arabic, particularly Indonesian, particularly um, Malaysian and Pakistani. Um, we want to speak to those kinds of, of groups. Um, you can also, please, if you want to get involved, share our videos, share them in groups share them in, in talk groups, speak to people uh, about what we're doing. Um, you can get involved by raising our profile and by um, encouraging other Christians to start learning the kind of apologetics and polemics that we're, we're teaching down here. You can also support us through um, sharing our tweets. Um, and particularly if you are an apologist yourself, um, and this is directly to those of you who are apologists, um, engaging in the comment section. You know, um, we, we appreciate all the words of support that we get, but we are looking for people to engage in the comment section, defending the faith going forward. Now, and finally, one more other thing that you could do is we are looking to capture testimonies, particularly of ex-Muslims. So if you know of an ex-Muslim who has become a Christian, who wants to share their story, please help them get in touch with us um, so that we can capture their story like that of Nisar, like that of Akuma, like that of Mohammed Fiaz, um, so that we can capture their story and share it and to highlight um, the, the, the plight of persecuted Christians in this country, let alone in other lands. Furthermore, and finally, sorry, because I'm a bit like Paul, I have more than one finally, um, if you're interested in us doing training sessions at your church or fellowship, please do get in touch with us. We are willing to do that. Um, and there you go.